So, uh, welcome back to the Bodacious Bulletin, uh, the show where we talk. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, one topic today. I almost said two. We've got one topic today. Uh, I feel really passionately about, uh, I have some pretty similar experiences, and though I am not any semblance of a substitute for actual professional help, we could talk about it. Without further ado, for crying out loud, uh, and here we go. Hey Orange, over the past few months I've come to realize that I was surrounded by a very toxic group of friends. It's funny, you hear so much about being yourself and not following the crowd that you'd expect it to be easy when you're actually falling victim to those things. But I guess it's not as simple as it sounds. Anyway, since early last year I've been hanging out with a group of people that would fit into your typical popular kids description. It was really hard to express my own genuine interests and opinions around them. So I started convincing myself that I was interested in everything they were. I listened to the same music they did, wore the same clothes, liked the same girls as they did, as embarrassing as that sounds. Uh, and it got to a point that my entire being was tethered to them, and I completely lost who I was on my own. However, over the past few months, I've managed to heavily distance myself from them and started working on myself. I started working out, I reconnected with the passions I had lost and neglected, and found some people I could call my genuine friends. Yet I still feel tethered to that group. It's a nagging sensation I get whenever I see them post a story on Snapchat or Instagram, that pang of insecurity that hits every single time I bump into them on the street. I somehow still feel left out when I see them doing stuff without me, even though I know deep down I don't want to. You seem like a pretty level-headed and independent guy, so I guess I thought you would have some advice on how I can move on from those guys and the judgment that comes with them. Thank you, Burger. So, Burger, I experienced something eerily similar to you in that I couldn't let go of a very toxic friend group for years. And for context, these guys are great now. I hold no grudges. But yeah. Uh, anyway, now that's out of the way. These guys were great most of the time. Other times, I was the butt of every single joke in the group. And that alone can weigh on someone. Uh, and I'm probably more sensitive than I even think I am. So it, it really, it, it got to me. But it didn't stop at just jokes. These jokes were the unalive yourself, no one cares what you have to say, you are nothing but dirt to us, we're not actually your friends, we hate you, you should just shut up and die kind. Th you know, jokes, right? So... Uh, I let that happen because I was a doormat, but it doesn't excuse what they did. So, it was, it, it was, it was rough, and I let it happen for a long time, and I was overly forgiving, and I gave these dudes chance upon chance, uh, and, and to make matters worse, any time I would bring up how it made me feel, they would just crap on me way harder. So, I just tried the, the shut up and take it route. That ended up being way too much. And then they started going on trips without me, hanging out without me. Not just not inviting me, but making it known what they were doing. And it was like they were just flaunting it. It was really, it was super depressing. And I just sit at home and watch uh, Schlatt fish on S&P Live and just, and just sit and stare. That was my life. That That's what I did instead. Until... I met a great group of guys at my church small group, right? I am not saying you are only going to find a great group of guys if you go to your church small group, whatever. Uh, that's where I met uh, these dudes and they pulled me out of a massive rut. Uh, and I finally just had some friends that didn't suppress my individuality. And whether they had to or not, they were nice to me. Uh, and that's kind of all I really needed at that time. And it was weird because as soon as I started hanging out with those guys, I go on, on a beach trip with these dudes soon after I meet them, really. And the, the original group starts to get jealous 
despite the fact that they don't invite me to anything. I, it was so backwards, and it kind of messed with my, like, my idea and expectation of friends. But after a while, just through, not just this new group of guys, but life in general, I learned my worth, and little by little, I would stop letting things slide. It still took years and years and years. It took until college, the first year of college, to officially, like, cut things off. Because it had gotten very noticeably unhealthy. And that they would reel me back in, and I would simply get hurt again. And, and just, I'd start back at square one. But it seems like you're way further down the right track than I than I was at that time. It seems like you found these dudes, you're reconnecting with your passions. I didn't even know what my passions were uh, by that point. Around the time when I was simply left to myself, uh, that's funny enough, when I started getting inspired to one day create content, and then from there created the King Orange page, and now I'm here, and now I'm going to VidCon in like two days. Crazy. But as for kind of curbing this fear of missing out, even though these people aren't healthy for you at all, realize that these people, to an extent, mean only as much as you let them. You could go a step further. I did this at one point. You could think to yourself, these people only exist as much as I think they do. Like, if they're irrelevant to your life now, and they can't affect you unless you let them, you're in a very good position. So, I know it's easier said than done. Uh, I couldn't take my own advice for so long. But it really just took realizing that they don't, as bad as this may sound, they don't provide you any benefit. Not that you should just have friends that are just friends that like do things for you. Don't be a freaking leech. Don't use people. You should only have friends that build you up. Friends that sharpen you. And now that you've found those guys, it, it may take unfollowing those people on... Instagram and Snapchat because it's obviously making you feel like nothing but but bad. It's not providing you any benefit following them, much less, you know, maintaining any friendship with them. The most important thing in a friendship or really any relationship being yourself and communicating. So as long as you've found that, you're in the clear, dude. You're already at the finish line. The problem is, you keep looking back. Other than that, uh, I wish you the best of luck with your new friends. Please, stay focused on your healthy ones. The other guys that, that ship has sailed and crashed and burned like a Viking burial, you're fine now. Don't look back on the way it was. There is no greater moment than, than now. As, as Master Ugwe once said, yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. But today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. You're living in it, baby. Have a bodacious day. Hello, don't, don't you go anywhere. Don't you, don't you go anywhere. This is King Orange coming to you from beyond the void to tell you we're done. With, with the archaic gmails, we have moved on to greener pastures with a beautiful Google submissions form that will be linked in the description of every single video. Uh, so, if you'd like to be a part of any future video, if you have any sort of topic, you send it there. Not some stinky email. What are you, 50? No, no. You're, you're, you're a modern man. You use Google submissions form uh, in the description below. Thank you. See you next episode.